Okay, we're uh, lucky enough to be here today with Tim Cruikshank. Tim, you just come back from Big Holiday. How was that? Yeah, it was good. It was good to get away and have a bit of a break. It's a, it's a long season of training and, and playing, so having sort of four or five weeks away and, and relaxing and, and just uh, yeah, chilling out and getting away from it was yeah, pretty refreshing. Now, you spent some of that time on holiday with Stephen O'Keefe. He's, uh, he's a wonderful travelling companion, I imagine. Uh, where'd you get to? Yeah, we went, spent a few weeks in Asia, went to, uh, to Singapore and, and Bali and then over to Vietnam for a while. So as I said, yeah, it was a good relaxing few weeks and there's a good uh, getting away with his sock and uh, letting the hair down for a bit. And now it's time to get back into pre-season pre and uh, get fit before we start on June 11. Now tell me, I've got no doubt that you've probably got recognised quite a bit while you're overseas, having come through um, the uh, Clio Bachelor of the Year competition and did pretty well, I, uh, I believe. So. Have you been recognised uh, since that competition? I got recognised everywhere in Asia, but only because I was hanging out with Sock, not because they knew who I was. <laughs> he was getting hit up left, right and centre, so... Nah, mate, I don't, certainly don't get recognised too often, but yeah, the whole Cleo thing was, uh, was a bit of fun. Now, thinking back to last year, a bit of a breakthrough year for you in many ways. You performed pretty well uh, in your first-class games and also uh, in your one-day games. Uh, happy with the way it went last year? Yeah, it was good to get some uh, regular playing time and sort of break through and, and get into the side on a bit more of a regular basis. But uh, yeah, and get some decent decent performance on the board. But it's now about, I suppose, capitalising on them and, and really putting some bigger scores together and, and um, yeah, performing more consistently. And that's certainly something I want to achieve this season. Batted really well at North Sydney Oval that day. I think you got 70 odd in the, in the Ryobi Cup um, television game. Is it, uh, is it a little harder when the camera's around? Is that taking a bit of getting used to, you know, that extra pressure and, and knowing there's a, a larger number of people watching? Yeah, I think the first couple of games is something you've got to try and, and wrap your head around. It's certainly something that's on your mind, especially in the field and when there's a bit of a crowd there and you're getting a bit of heckling from the, from the stands. But I think you soon forget after a couple of games that it's there and certainly I think once you're batting and you're in the middle and you're, you, you get in a zone, you completely forget it's a TV game. Um, but yeah. It's um, yeah, it's a certainly good experience, and it's something you've got to learn to keep your composure in those in those big games. I suppose that would have helped you pretty well with the Thunder, because obviously there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going around in the launch of the BBL, and you know obviously you had Chris Gale and David Warner as well. Chris Gale, uh, tell us a little bit about him as a as a teammate at the Thunder. Yeah, he's a pretty he's a pretty cool character. Um, although what what you see on camera is not not necessarily what you get. He's certainly a good team man, and he he worked as hard as anyone at training, and he he, he tried to help out as much as he could. And he was a great role model for all of us. I think we all enjoyed playing with him, and, and certainly learnt for him. And then he was yeah he was great to have around. And yeah, fingers crossed we can we can get him back involved this year as well. I imagine he was, he was a pretty good role model off the field as well, Chris. <laughs> He was, he was. He taught us a few things off the field as well, but I don't think any of us are quite at his level off the field yet, but uh, we certainly tried to, to, to run off him as much as we could. Uh, How did you find the BBL? I mean, uh, opportunities a bit limited, but you came in there and you opened the batting in a few games, um, yeah. played against some different teams. How did you find the standard, the hype? I thought the standard was exceptional. I mean, bringing the overseas players and you got the best of obviously Australian domestic cricket and the yeah the standard was outstanding. Um, from a personal level it was a little bit disappointing opportunity wise and uh, just sort of didn't quite happen for me uh, personally but anyway that's, you sort of got to learn from that and um, still had some great experience obviously opening the batting with Chris in front of a big crowd at ANZ and getting to have experience like that probably highlights my career so yeah it's still, still a great experience all around. So what are you working on in the off season? What are your hopes uh, for this coming season in terms of your own cricket? Yeah, just working really hard on my fitness at the moment. Uh, all the boys are in here working hard already with, with Chapo and trying to get prepared for the start of pre-season, I suppose. So hopefully get my fitness to where I want it to be, which is slowly getting there. And then, uh, yeah, start, start hitting balls probably late this week, working a few uh, technical parts of my game and then probably have a, have a little bit of break on my batting before we get into sort of the, the serious end of pre-season, close to the season. So just hopefully, yeah, get the preparation right and be ready to go come September. 